Hello fellow muddlers, Bruce here. It's time to do a little weathering on my covered bridge, which would be the last step prior to installing it on the uh, layout. And uh, I will probably do all the weathering on this with uh, chalks of uh, one type or another, either chalks or chalk powders. Um, because chalks adhere extremely well to paper, like these uh, shingles on the, on the roof, and to wood. Um, if I was trying to weather styrene or metal, I might do a wash of uh, either a water-based paint or an oil-based paint. But uh, you can do a credible weathering job uh, with just chalks if you're dealing with wood and paper. Um, here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm not going to overdo any uh, of the weathering, but uh, if this bridge was being used regularly by a steam locomotive, you would expect to see <clears throat> some soot um, from the smokestack right above the uh, entrance on both sides um, because this is this end and the other end will be uh, on land, if you will. You would expect to see some kick up of uh, dirt and dust uh, on the end of the bridge. Whereas on the side of the bridge, that's over the, the water, they, you would not expect to see that kind of kick up, except for perhaps a little bit uh, close to the end on each side. That's why when I spray painted, if you recall, I said I did not attempt to give it a uh, solid coat of gray. I, I tried to vary it a bit to allow, uh, you know, some of the base of the, of the wood to show through so it looked worn. So that will, that will do me in good stead now, so it looks a little bit uh, varied color. But the roof certainly needs um, some weathering, and what I'll probably do is... Uh, get some different browns in there to uh, make the w uh, make it look a little varied and uh, be, you know there would be soot raining down on this thing uh, as the locomotive went uh, through too so a little bit of black wouldn't hurt but again not going to overdo it uh, in terms of um, you know what chalks and powders this set of uh, Weber Costello um, Chalks has uh, been a good friend for many years. Um, it's got quite a few colors that I don't use in this application. This was bought initially when uh, the hobby of plaster craft was very popular. Oh, I guess we're dealing with the 1980s for the most part. And you would buy something that was raw white plaster and then color it with these chalks and then cover it with a fixative. And if you want an example of that, uh, let me just move the camera a little bit and you can see that that lamp base is a baseball glove. That was white plaster and has been uh, colored. Anything that you see there is colored with chalks and then sprayed with a fixative. So that's, these chalks have been uh, in the family for quite a while. And uh, there's still plenty of chalk left on each of those sticks. So that'll be uh, one of them. Uh, Bragdon powders in a variety of colors. There's some browns in here and some dust, uh, dusty grays and so forth. These are already ground up. Uh, the only of uh, this is uh, Bar Mills um, uh, chalks. The only one I probably use would be the grimy black if. Uh, but I have plenty of other grimy blacks. For instance, here's uh, AIM, A-I-M powders, and uh, this is a grimy black, plenty of it in there. And uh, this is soot black and dark gray and rusty brown, all from AIM powders as well. So plenty of, of options. Plus this pastel um, brownish, blackish uh, stick that I have that I can uh, use also on the roof. So that's what I'll be doing. None of it overdone. And I'll probably start on the ends with the soot 
above the uh, entranceway on both sides, so up up here, and then some um, dust and grime around it. Again, not overdone on both sides. So I'll come back with that when I am uh, working on the ends. See you then. All right, let's just take a look at uh, some of this work in progress. In, in putting on these powders, you can use a variety of uh, brushes, uh, both stiff, this is somewhat stiff and uh, soft, but uh, these um, eyelid uh, applicators of uh, eye makeup that you can get in uh, drugstores and so forth are really your friend. So, you know, working, working on the area above the uh, the entrance here, I used a little bit of uh, soot black from AIM and then they have a, a dark gray too so you can start blending it out uh, as you walk away from it here a little bit, leaving it streaked somewhat, <coughs> fairly heavy over the uh, <coughs> entrance to the bridge. And on the sides here, that's a Bragdon powder called uh, weather, Weathered Brown. And uh, again, you can just get some of the powder, some of it has fallen down here, and uh, just start applying it with your eye makeup applicator here, little sponge applicators. And on the side, I've taken some of that, uh, some of that brown as well, and just kind of randomly uh, streak some to get some difference in in variation in the colors as if uh, you know it's weathered and some grime and stuff has come down off of the uh, off of the roof and so forth but nothing nothing major and uh, that'll be the way I I leave it on the side of the bridge for sure and uh, just so it doesn't look like it hasn't been out in the weather at all. A little heavier right near the, the land, and I'll do the same thing on this side. And uh, yeah, I'll repeat it on the other end, and, uh, and on the other side. Then I'll work on the roof, and I'll come back and uh, show you what I'm doing on that. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, just do what what's pleasing to the eye, I guess. Here's that package of Bragnan powder, Bragnan powder. You don't want to get uh, too much on it, so I tend to get most of it down here on my, on my pad and just pick it up a little bit at a time. In the end, I'll wash this pad off and get rid of any of it so it doesn't come up on my next uh, modeling project. But uh, let me make sure you can see that end of the bridge. Yeah, you can. So, yeah, just streaking, streaking some on here and there. Um, nothing being overdone, that's for sure. But as I said before, these kind of powders stick rather well on uh, wood. So, yeah, I'm going to continue on and uh, then we'll take a look at what I'm going to do on the roof. Okay, talk to you then. Okay, for the roof I'm going to start with a very soft broad brush and put some Bragdon Dust Bowl Brown, which is almost the same color as the uh, as the roof shingles, and just give it a base of of that over the entire roof. Because it's almost the same color, you hardly see it. I'll just get that on. First, kind of 
kind of gives the, uh, not that the shingles were very shiny, but it kind of gives them just a dull, a dull look. Then I'm going to come back carefully with Bragdon's Weathered Brown and start with that same brush depositing some of that darker brown near the top. And then drawing it down the roof. And just a little bit streaky, but I always come back with this. It's very difficult to get it off though, so you don't want to uh, put too much on it first. So let's see if you can start to see. This is the the back side. You can start to see some shading on the roof there. And I will continue to do that just with those browns until I get the uh, the look that I like and uh, leave it be for now. Live with it for a little while. And uh, can always go back with some one of the lighter gray dust kind of uh, colors. Yeah, I think that's about all I will do right now. And leave it be. Alrighty, that will be the end of the uh, build of the Campbell Scale Models Covered Bridge. And uh, there's the the end weathered and you can see the roof and like I say, I might do a little more on that roof yet, but you get the idea. Alrighty, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and if you have not yet done so, please subscribe. Um, you might have noticed that this week I did not get to post a video on Tuesday 
and that's because we had uh, two consecutive nights of uh, very bad thunderstorms roll through, and the second one knocked power out in the area for three days, and then the internet uh, was out and stayed out for another three days, and uh, ended up with a tree on the roof of the garage and a couple of other ones uprooted in the yard, so I didn't have much modeling time. All right, uh, talk to you again soon. In the meantime, happy modeling.